Hey everybody, uh, today I want to talk about direct products of groups. So the direct product of two groups is a way to combine these groups together to get a larger group. You can also take a direct product of three groups or four groups, etc. You can think of direct products as also a way to decompose a group into its pieces. So if you have a large complicated group that you can express as a direct product of simpler pieces, then you can understand that larger group via the simpler pieces. Terminology, some people call these direct sums. There is a technical difference between direct sums and direct products that only arises when you're combining an infinite number of groups. Here we only take a direct product of a finite number of groups, so those subtleties don't arise. Um, and our book calls these direct products instead of direct sums, so that's what we'll do. So I've written here the definition. If capital G and capital H are two groups, then their direct product is a group. It's denoted G to direct product H. Its elements are all things of the form little g, little h, ordered pairs of group elements, one from capital G and the other from capital H. What's the group operation on this direct product? Well, I need to be able to take two arbitrary elements, call them little g, little h, and little g prime, little h prime. And I need to be able to combine them. And the way I combine them is, in the first coordinate, I combine g and g prime. And in the second coordinate, I combine h and h prime. Okay, that's, that's it. That's the definition. I should remark this multiplication here is in the group G, and this multiplication here is in the group H. Okay, so multiplication in the direct product is using the group multiplication in G and in H. All right, let me give the definition of a direct product of um, n groups right now. So the definition is as follows. If g1 all the way up through gn are groups, then their direct product group is so now I just have g1 direct product g2 direct product dot 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 all the way up to gn that's how I uh, denote this direct product group its elements are all things of the form ordered pairs little g1 little g2 dot 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 little gn where little gi is a member of group capital GI for all I. All right. So that's our definition, except I need to tell you what the operation is. So we have component-wise operation again. If I give you two such elements, so g1 all the way up through gn, and g1 prime all the way up through gn prime, how do I combine those? Well, in the first coordinate, I just combine g1 with g1 prime. In the second coordinate, I just combine g2 with g2 prime. And finally, in the last coordinate, I combine gn with gn prime. Okay, and this first component has multiplication in the group g1, and in this last component you have multiplication in the group gn. Alright, so we're really just piecing together the structures of these n different groups um, all together into one group.
Let's do some examples. This first example we've already uh, described Z2, direct product Z2. We just haven't given it that name yet. All right. So the elements here, well, we need an element from the first group. So the element from the first group could be 0, or it could be 1. Okay, And then we need elements from the second group. The elements from the second group could again be either 0, or they could be 1. Okay, And those are the only ways I can combine the elements from Z2 with elements from Z2 in this ordered fashion. Okay, and then let me just do an example addition. And Z2, direct product Z2. So what do I get if I combine with, combine one zero with one one? I just combine them component wise. So I combine the first two components, 1 and 1, to get 2. And then I combine the second two components, um, 0 and 1, to get 1. And this is really just 0, 1, because I'm doing uh, this combination in Zmod 2. All right. You can combine groups that seemingly have nothing to do each with each other. So let's say D4 is the symmetries of the square. Okay, so I can rotate the square, I can flip the square. And let's say Z mod 3, well, we know what Z mod 3 is. Its elements are 0, 1, and 2. Okay, I can combine these things. So I can take a rotation by 90 degrees. That's an element of D4. 2 is an element of Z mod 3. I can combine this with rotation by 180 degrees and 1. 1's an element of Z mod 3. And what do I get? Well, first I just combine the two rotations to get a rotation by 270 degrees. And then I combine 1 and 2 in Z mod 3, which is 3, but 3 mod 3 is 0. Okay. So other examples, maybe you've heard of R2, the plane before. This is the direct product of the real lines under addition with itself. And 3D space, this is a group under addition. You can add two points of 3D space. That's the direct product of the real line under addition combined with itself three times. Um, another example, Z2, direct product Z3, what are the elements here? Okay, so I'm just going to write down the elements. I already know there's going to be six elements. I'll tell you how in a moment. All right. So I can have as my first coordinate 0 or 1. Those are all the elements from Z2. And then what can I have as my second coordinate? I can have all my elements from Z3. So I could have 0, or I could have 1, or I could have 2. OK. And you can probably guess how the group operation looks. Um, notice I, I combined a group of size 2 with a group of size 3. I took their direct product and I group, got a group of size 6. That's more generally going to be true. The size of a direct product of groups is just going to be the product of the sizes. Okay, so fact is the following. For G and H finite groups, 
the size of their direct product. Okay, so this is the number of elements in this direct product. It's just the number of elements in G times the number of elements in H. Right? More generally, for G1, G2, all the way up through Gn, finite groups. Well, what's the size of the direct product? The size of the direct product, the number of elements in the direct product, is just the number of elements in G1 times the number of elements in, two, in G2 times dot 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 all the way up to times the number of elements in Gn. Okay, let's ask the following question. What's the order of the element 1, 1 in um, Z mod 2Z, direct product Z mod 3Z? Okay. So let's consider this subgroup generated by 1, 1. Certainly has 1, 1 in it. I add 1, 1 to that and I get 2, 2. But that first 2 is 0 in Z mod 2Z. So I get 0, 2. I add 1, 1 to that to get 1, 3. But 3 is 0 in Z mod 3Z. So I get 1, 0. I add 1, 1 to that, and I get 2, 1, or 0, 1. Add 1, 1 to that, and I get 1, 2. And then I add 1, 1 to that to get 2, 3, which is 0, 0 in Z2, direct product Z3. So I've got this entire group. Okay? So, so the order of this element 1, 1 is equal to 6, i.e., Z2, direct product Z3, is cyclic with 1, 1 as a generator. Okay. 1, 1 generated this entire group. Okay. So let me tell you this fact that's related. This is theorem 8.2 in our book. For G1 and, um, well, let me. Yeah, okay. Um, so for G and H, finite cyclic groups, we have that G direct product H is cyclic if and only if the sizes of G and H are relatively prime. Okay? So we saw this example where G was equal to Z mod 2Z. This had size 2. H was equal to Z mod 3Z. This has size 3. And then um, these are both cyclic. Two and three are relatively prime. So that's why G direct product H um, was cyclic. Okay? So two, three, relatively prime. 
implies that this direct product group z mod 2z direct product z mod 3z is cyclic. Okay, so let me end with one last example. What if I try to take both g and h to be z mod 2z? Okay, they're both cyclic, but now they have the same size. So is 2 relatively prime with 2? No, they have 2 as a common divisor. Okay, so here 2 and 2 are not relatively prime. So that implies that Z2, direct product Z2, is not cyclic. All right. And uh, we already knew that. When we were studying isomorphisms, we talked about how there's two different isomorphism classes for groups of size 4. You either have Z mod 4Z, which is cyclic, or you have Z mod 2Z, direct product Z mod 2Z, the Klein 4 group, which is not cyclic. All right, so in summary, we saw how to combine groups together using the direct product operation. Okay, so the elements of G direct product H are ordered pairs of elements in, little, in capital G and capital H. And we can combine two such elements. We combine two such elements by multiplying their G components together using the product operation in G and multiplying their H components together using the group multiplication structure in H. Okay, we saw this interesting example of Z2 combined with Z3 and we checked that it had 1,1 one, one as a generator. Okay, so it was a cyclic group. And that's, that's an example of this theorem that if you have two finite cyclic groups and you take their direct product, the result is cyclic if and only if the sizes of the individual groups are relatively prime. So 2 and 3 were relatively prime, so Z mod 2 direct product Z mod 3 was cyclic. By contrast, 2 and 2 are not relatively prime, so Z2 combined with Z2 is not cyclic. Thanks so much.